Hello there lovely people. So today I'm going to be doing a video response to Katie at Books and Biscuits Children's Books. So I loved her video and it made me want to go through all of my children's books. I've tried to sort of group them together into sort of younger reads and slightly older reads and a few of them are missing because I don't actually own copies of them which is blasphemy because they're some of my favourite books of all time. So I'm going to start off with the younger ones. These ones are my lovely childhood reads. The first one is If You Give a Mouse a Cookie by Laura Joff Numeroff. I think I've pronounced that right, I don't know. But it's about a little mouse who wants a cookie and a string of things he wants afterwards and it's basically warning you not to give a mouse a cookie. But um, my nan used to read this to me and I love it to pieces. Another children's book is The Silver Slippers by Elizabeth Coder Callan and this is all about a girl who makes mistakes in a ballet class and she feels really upset because she's got a show coming up until her mum gives her a pair of silver slippers on a necklace chain and she practices and practices and practices and she ends up being like the best in the show. So this one was very close to my heart and it came with, I don't know whether you can see in the cover the little sticky bits, but it came with my very own pair of silver slippers on a chain which was amazing at the time and it still is, I need to find them. <laughs> the next two are from the um, Orchid Books adaptations of Shakespeare and even <laughs> even when I was younger I was a huge Shakespeare fan although these weren't in the original prose because it would have been kind of hard for a five-year-old to read the original prose um, I love them to pieces I even put gold stars on them because back then I was still a book junkie and I was I, I had like a mild case of OCD when I was younger and I ordered everything not in like colour order or alphabetical order. I ordered it in how much I liked them and these were right at the top of my bookcase with the gold stars. So I've got The Tempest and A Midsummer Night's Dream. I have read the rest of them but I got them from the library, my mum would only let me buy two. They're adapted by Andrew Matthews and Tony Ross and they are amazing. I would highly recommend you read these even <laughs> if you are my age because they're amazing and I'm going to reread them today because that's made me want to reread them. Okay, I'm going to do the two that are off the list. I've got Kensuke's Kingdom by Michael Mopago. Oh my goodness, we read this in class when we were younger and I just, this book is, ah, enough said. And it's basically about a shipwreck that happens and this little boy gets stranded on this island and he meets this old man called Kensuke's and he teaches him all of the ways to survive and he builds a bond with this man and it's just such a lovely lovely book. I believe there's a film which I do have to watch because I haven't seen it and I need to see it. And the other one that I haven't got here is Vicky Angel by Jacqueline Wilson. Um, I read a lot of Jacqueline Wilson when I was younger but Vicky Angel has to be my favourite. I just thought it was so clever and so funny how her best friend who's died follows her around. Now that I look back on it it's kind of creepy but Jacqueline Wilson made it funny and light-hearted, so that was really good. Oh, I forgot, there's another one. I'm so bad at narrowing down books, it's not even funny. I couldn't choose a favourite book. Ah. Um, yeah, anyway, the next one is Deeper Than Blue. I can't remember who it's by, but I'll post um, the name in the description. But that book changed me when I was younger. I got it in year seven from the library. And, oh, it's about this girl who's a champion swimmer and then she gets then she gets in a car crash and her legs have to be amputated and it's all about how she learns to swim with amputated legs. I sound, I make it sound like I read some really depressing books when I was younger. Don't worry, I'm, I'm still a happy person. Um, I also loved Candy Floss which is about a girl whose dad owns a fairground and it's all about her parents and just parental problems really. <laughs> But Jacqueline Wilson always great and this cover I've I've always loved it and I it's just really pretty so that's one of my books um I'm going to come back at Katie with one of her same books because this is one of my all-time favorite books and it's practically the only book on my bookshelf that's damaged from me reading it too much which is Molly Moon's book of hypnotism incredible book of hypnotism 
don't forget The Incredible, by Georgia Bing, and it's basically about this girl, Molly Moon, who finds this book of hypnotism in her local library, and there's a page, oh, it's so good, and Katie and I are planning on rereading this together at some point, and I'm really looking forward to it because I love this book. Obviously I had to get some Roald Dahl in there and I've got the BFG because this was probably the first Roald Dahl book I read and then after that Matilda. But oh, I love the concept of the dream hunters, the catchers, the deliverers, just the BFG in general. And oh, I loved it. As usual, Roald Dahl. Hats off. The next one has a bit of a funny story to it because um, it's kind of huge. And the print is absolutely ginormous. And I bought this because I wanted a copy of it because I read it in the library and I loved it so much that I wanted a copy of it. And I didn't realise when I was younger that I sent, well, I sent my mum off to buy the one with big print. So I got a ginormous large print one. But it's still a great book. It's also about like a health issue being sort of managed with sport and I was really obsessed with ice skating at the time that I read this and it was just really great because she uses ice skating to heal her essentially and she becomes really good at it so very good book I can't really remember much of it but still great and the last one I've got I thought it was a good one to end on is The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis I want to read the rest of the Narnia books the Narnia Chron I don't know what you'd call it. It's not a trilogy. I was about to say trilogy, but it's not a trilogy. There's way more. The Narnia series, um, because this, oh, my dad used to read this to me without fail. However late he got home, he would come into my room, wake me up and read it because, well, I'd probably still be sat up, but, um, I'd ask him to wake me up. Oh, memories. So, <laughs> well, I'm not going to go through the story of that one because practically everybody knows the story. But those are my childhood books. Thank you, Katie, for inspiring me to do this video because I had so much fun doing it and a lot of nostalgia was built up doing this video, so... Whew. I'm gonna go reread those Shakespeare books.